so in short, the bioreactor um, can be defined as a controllable and scalable 3D growth environment for your microorganism of choice. Um, there are many different uh, models available, but we will look today at the example of a stir tank bioreactor. And if you look at uh, the devices we put here, the left side um, is the actual bioreactor unit, which you can see here. It is um, a vessel filled with medium with a motor on top. And this motor is connected to a shaft that goes through the head plate that closes the bioreactor and is then connected to an impeller within the actual vessel. Uh, this impeller yeah, turns and swirls the medium and thereby uh, leads to an equilibrium uh, distribution of nutrients, um, cells, oxygen, and other components of the media. Um, your culture condition can be measured by sensors, which are inserted into the head plate and then can reach into the medium. And they can give then um, reading feedback to this device on the right side. And this is a, a bioprocess control station, which um, yeah, acts in concert with the bioreactor and is responsible for setting up the culture conditions and maintaining them constant. The sensor readings are transferred to the unit, uh, which is usually a bioprocess control software installed, and it can then control these values to a set point that was previously determined and adjust the culture conditions accordingly. For example, if you have a um, pH sensor in here that uh, measures the pH in your medium, it gives feedback to the station and the station compares it with a set point and can then adjust the pH in the medium by adding base or acid through pumps like these ones that are on the front of the device. So these are the modes um, which you use to yeah, let your culture grow. And there are three common ones and I want to give you an overview of them in the following. And the first one we look at is called the batch fermentation mode. So this is relatively simple. You have your bioreactor, you open it, you add your inoculum to the um, medium inside, you close it, you set your um, bioprocess um, conditions, and then you let your bacteria grow. The bacteria will then um, deplete the nutrients that are in the medium, and once these nutrients are depleted, this is the end point of your experiment. So during this process, you don't add any medium, and therefore, it enables the shortest cultivation period of these different um, cultivation modes. Um, the pros of this is that it is an easy to use process because um, yeah, it's quite simple in construction. We have a low contamination risk because um, you open the bioreactor only once in the beginning and once when the experiment is finished. However, because you don't add any nutrients, you um, don't replenish nutrients, um, the cells are presented to an ever-changing um, cell environment, um, which can, for example, hinder growth and yields and also lead to the accumulation of unwanted byproducts into your bioreactor. And this is why um, fat batch fermentation was developed, which is like a natural continuation of the idea of the batch fermentation. So in fat batch, you start uh, as the same with a bioreactor and you add your inoculum. However, as you can see, the um, volumes in this bioreactor, the starting volume, is lower than in the fat batch. And this is because you add um, fresh medium and nutrients during the um, bioprocess run. And this, of course, elongates the availability of important uh, nutrients, for example, carbohydrate sources or nitrogen sources, which are crucial for bacterial growth. And this prolongs the um, possible growing phase of the bacteria. Just uh, like in the batch fermentation mode, the endpoint here is the nutrient depletion. And the advantages of this system is that it is still relatively easy to use, even though it's a bit more complicated to set up than the batch fermentation. Um, it enables a more stable growth environment compared to the batch mode. Um, however, at the same point, because you add an additional input uh, to your bioreactor, it increases the contamination risk. Um, and you still have to deal with the problem of byproduct accumulation. And with this, we come to the um, last fermentation mode, which is the continuous fermentation. So the continuous fermentation mode um, is again a continuation of the fat batch mode. Um, 
again, it is quite similar in design. You have your culture. Um, fresh, medium and nutrients are replenished over time. Um, but at the same time, you are able to remove old medium and old cells and also unwanted byproducts. And with this, you like in the fat batch mode, you can prolong the bacterial growth um, by adding fresh nutrients. But at the same time, you can remove um, your unwanted byproducts. And if this is adjusted ideally, it keeps the um, volume in the bioreactor quite constant. And therefore, this enables the longest cultivation period of the three fermentation modes. So the pros of this mode is that um, it offers the most stable um, environment out of this three mode by um, removing or keeping byproduct accumulation low. Uh, at the same time, because you also add additional inputs and outputs of the system, it uh, bears the highest contamination risk and is the most complex mode to set up. And therefore, if um, long cultivation times are not your um, yeah, highest priority, we recommend using the fat batch mode as it offers a good symbiosis of the easiness of the batch culture and the more stable growth environment of the continuous fermentation.